we are we are live. I wanted to shorten that time. I'm gonna just gotta say I've got to be transparent, Jenny. Yeah, the, time okay. between, the time between the end of the music and then the introduction, we've got to make something professional there, right? It's got to, or not professional, just a little smoother. But anyway, thank but you for tuning in. I can only do what I can do, Daniel. Okay. Well, no, yeah, it's not on you. It's on it's on the average dude. I'm just trying to be a little more creative and, and a nice little segue from the music to something kind of fun. Wouldn't that be nice? So thanks again. Tuning in to Jenny Winnie and the average dude. A nice little reprieve from the, the day to day. The daily grind. And the daily grind. Thank you, Jenny. Mm -hmm. It's just like last week, you know, I mean, uh, rec I want to say her name right. Well, I'll just call her The Rock. The Rock. rock. Yeah. The rock. And anyway, she was just like, wow, I didn't the queen even know. Of goofiness. The queen of goofiness. Yeah. She didn't know she even needed yes that last week. But I mean, you know what? It was a reprieve for her. She's like, it yeah, just started yeah. her day. We all had a little laugh, laugh. Yes. And we need that. There's a lot of things that frustrate us. Mm -hmm. Isn't there? Yeah. Oh, by the way, the introduction to the joke. This is Jenny Winnie and the average dude. That's what you're watching. I'm <laughs> In case you didn't. And then this, this person right over here, see, I've got the, I've got this point down. It took me forever to figure out, no, you're, you're pointing the wrong way, sir. You're <laughs> pointing the wrong way. Jonathan Peoples. Is back. And, and look at, he's, he's already throwing out compliments. You've got to love. <laughs> you got to love that. Lordy. And Marcello, yeah. thank you for, for tuning in here. Hello, I saw, saw you commenting earlier. Hello from Atlanta, GA. Welcome to Atlanta, where the players play. And they, I'm not, you, you have you never heard that song? Marcello's probably heard that, but that used to be a popular song, Jenny. Oh. I know you're not real good with pop culture. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm not. Yeah, there's, there's Joe. Welcome <laughs> and love to all. Joe, we love you. Thank you for tuning in. Wait a and, second. And like you say, Jonathan Peoples. He's watching genuinely in the average day. You must be, we must be dreaming that you're in the comments. I, know, we, I was like, I thought you like fell off the earth, Jonathan. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to, to acknowledge Thank you. He knows the song. Welcome to Atlanta where the, where the players I play. Know if I heard like the appropriate, like melody with it. Oh, oh. you never heard the, no, I was doing it perfectly. I was like, oh. <laughs> Okay. I was, it was incredible what I was doing. Seriously. <laughs> okay. So, I would like to, um, do something real quick. Okay, okay. Do something. All right. Here we go. Do you know what day it is? Oh, got a little music. I like it. May the 4th be with you. It's May the 4th. Now, I am not a big Star Wars fan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, welcome to Atlanta. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. but no, I did love Return of the Jedi. Those little Ewoks. Yeah. Oh man, those those guys. That were was cool. not the best one though. Okay. That was the best one. You got Jabba the Hutt. You got the Ewoks. Uh uh. No, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh. and that is the one though, isn't that the one where uh you get to see Darth Vader turning into into good? Yes. Or I don't I don't know necessarily. I think he don't don't they yeah, they sure. remove the you see what I'm doing here? I'm removing the mask. Yeah. That's what they did. Mm, I, yeah, that's I, I love those Ewoks. They're like teddy bears with, with intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, yeah <laughs> okay. And they lived in the woods and they had the tree house and they you remember the yeah. adult walkers, they had the logs. Oh, and Daniel, come on. And and return to wait a minute. Let's see. The Empire Strikes Back. We saw that in theater. You, me, little David, your brother, my yeah. brother, and our two dads. Empire Strikes Back. Maybe I was just you're you're Wait. you're a good bit older than me, so maybe I was just a little too young to remember and yeah, really embrace we that. You. you probably weren't invited on that little trip of cousins, but you're <laughs> right, Jonathan, Empire Strikes Back was the best. And yeah. then you know what? When they brought out like Jar Jar, you know, I don't like him. I don't you like don't like Jar Jar. Now, what's wrong with Jar Jar? He's just a... He gets on my nerves. He's like, I believe it. Up, I believe it up. <laughs> just stop. I can't. I can't deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. I did. i tell you what, though. You leave some movies and you leave with that energy. I remember going to the theater after that one. Of course, I was playing with the, the oh, figures yeah. and you oh, had yeah. to fight them. And, and then Back to the Future. If you went to see Back to the Future... 
What did you do? You got your skateboard. I didn't. And you hang on the back of cars. I remember I went down 85. On the- <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted, I was just in love with Michael J. Fox. And oh, yeah, he's a cool dude. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You're right, Martella. Nobody likes Jar Jar. I mean, it was the worst character of all time. The worst oh. character of all time. I have heard that before, but oh, it was <laughs> awful. It was painful. Painful. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> also, uh, Back to the Future, it made me think about um, there is a new documentary coming out, Michael J. Fox. Okay. It's called Steel. And Yeah, you know, because he has Parkinson's. Yes. And it talks about his, I mean, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's at 29 years old. As a young, young. That was when he was, and man, he was, his career, he's fantastic. Yeah, and he said he woke up one day and his his pinky was like uh, animatronic. It was shaking. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, that's that's a tough, tough diagnosis, oh. isn't it? Oh, good. Especially at 29. Right. That's that's just not normal. No. So, Star Strikes Back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Listen, I remember we saw it at the theater. And I'll tell you, you're not familiar with Spartanburg, but my daddy said, hey, y'all don't have to go get a bath. Just get in the, go jump in the pool. And go we jumped jump in the pool. pool. And then we went out to eat at this little place called Jed's Farm. Jed's Farm. Jed's farm had a little like, you know, and then we went to Empire Strikes Back. It was awesome. Oh, wow. Man, memories. Yeah. Now, t- tell me about tell me about your uh, your memories of today. How has your day been so far? Your morning. How's it going? Well, you know what? I'm trying to be a little productive today. I jumped up and, you Ooh. know, I started some laundry, did a little work on the computer. You know, I mean. There you go. Yeah. Very nice. Yesterday now, I started, guess what I started doing yesterday? What are you laughing at? What are you looking at? Oh, I'm looking at Doc Brown. <laughs> Joe said, have you been hanging around Doc Brown? And it took me a second to remember, Doc, this is a person, you, you talk about, uh, we're going to talk about distinct advantages later on with Dave, but he looks like a scientist. I mean, if anybody was going to play the role of Doc, it was it was the, the character they found. <laughs> I know, but when you look at him in other roles, you know what I mean? Yeah. He, he gives you that Kramer vibe off of uh, yes, side. He, he does. Yes. You always gave me that Kramer vibe, too. No, 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 no. I would be more of the cooler guy on the you show. You were cooler, but <laughs> no, no, I, I definitely can see the Kramer vibe. I, I believe I believe I've got that. Yeah, you so. do. You do. We, you know, I talked about this morning in our video. We have these these things in life that irritate us, right? Little yes. things. Not like Jar Jar. Like Jar Jar. Jar Jar. Now we, we we see the hate for Jar Jar. Now obviously he's not a real person. <laughs> we let these things annoy us, don't we? Yes. And I got a little annoyed. Sometimes we have a, a big Dorito or Frito right here, you know? Yep. And we're just waiting on somebody to kind of knock it off. See what I did there? It's a chip, chip on the shoulder. Oh yeah, I got it. I got it. I knew, I knew you would, but I, I was kind of, you know, making sure that joke landed with everybody. Oh, it landed. It landed. Yeah. But, uh, oh, okay. All right. Well, thank, thanks for tuning in, uh, yes. Ken. Love, love to have you there. And, and hopefully things clear up, and I'm sure they will. But real excited to have our guest on today. So I heard this. This person speak, Dave Sanderson. I heard him speak several years ago. And what do you know? Now now we're doing this fun podcast. Dave worked it out to be here with us this morning. He's got an incredible story. I've got a lot of questions. Jenny, look at, look at the questions. Now, we're not going to get to all these. There's limited time. There's limited time. I'll so, just sit over here like this. Yes, you get your question mark ready. That's that's the that's the pause, the stop sign. So we're gonna go ahead and, and welcome to the broadcast, Dave Sanderson. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me today. Dave, glad that you could join us. Ready to dig in. So many things that I want to talk to you about. Didn't get a chance to talk to you after you spoke. Uh, it was at an ING event back in Spartanburg several years ago. Maybe you remember that. I do remember yeah. that. Yep. And you're in Charlotte, North Carolina, correct? That was a local game for me. So, yes, I am in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't too far of a drive to come down here and talk to us. But, hey, the virtual world, you can join us. Are you in Charlotte today, Dave? I am. I am in Charlotte. I'll travel again until next week. So it's okay. perfectly. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. Absolutely. So one of the first things before we get into January 15th, 2009, because we're obviously going to talk about that. 
I wanted to bring up a name that you mentioned in one of your videos and then I did a little research and I said, that one of my favorites, one of my favorites, Jim Rohn. And I think that he is just so fantastic. So I just wanted you to kind of tell a little bit about your experience with Jim, yep. what you like about him and, and how he's impacted your life. And, and we'll kind of go from there. Well, thank you for that. I haven't had that question in years, so thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, I, you know, how that really came about is I had a mentor that started with me back here in Charlotte in 1984. And one of the things he recommended is I start improving myself, working on myself more than anything else. And he gave me a couple people's names. One was Tom Hopkins and the other was Jim Rohn. So I, I committed to go. I said, okay, I know who Jim Rohn is. I read a little bit about him. Let's do a tape. That's when we had cassette tapes, right? <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah. Tape I said, I can get the, I can get along with this guy, right? So I flew to Dallas, and how the how the opportunity to be in one of his seminars in Dallas, and it, it was fascinating. I mean, he was just he was so relatable, but he shared life lessons that you can you know it's not only about business, it's about your life lessons. But one of the things that came out of that for me is I never really had the opportunity to work with him, but he mentioned a guy by the name of Tony Robbins. Mm. Yeah, and then I had the opportunity not only to attend one of Tony's events, but became head of security for him few years later and got the opportunity to travel with him. So my lineage really goes back to Jim Rohn to Tony Robbins and, you know, just having the opportunity to, you know, to work, work and be around those folks has, has been a tremendous experience in my life. So, so how old were you, Dave, when you decided to go to a seminar? What, what made, what was, what was it about you that said, Hey, I want to, I want to get better. I want to improve. I want to do something with my life. Where did that come from? Well, I, I, I tell you exactly when it happened. It happened and started in May of 1984 when I was the second assistant restaurant manager here in Charlotte, in a place called Howard Johnson. And, you know, we, I was right on, uh, if you know anything about Charlotte, it's on the intersection of 77 and Woodlawn Road, last stop to the airport back then. But okay. a gentleman used to come in with his wife. His name was Bill. Her name was Bonnie. And they would come in every night and have ice cream and have coffee. I talked because I had second, I had second and third shift. I was there. But what I found out is, Bill owned over 80 movie theaters in North and South Carolina. And he was like the Sam Walton of Charlotte, wore a flannel shirt, drove a pickup truck, would never know who this guy was. Right? Wow, I love it. But <laughs> so he, he would talk, but then go to December 24th, 1984, when he rolled in, to, rode into the uh, Howard Johnson early, he wanted to show me what he got Bonnie for Christmas, and it was a blue Corvette. And I'd never seen a Corvette, couldn't spell Corvette, right? <laughs> you know, I knew nothing about Corvettes, but he tossed me the keys. We wrote, he said, we're going to take a ride. We went up and down Woodlawn Road. He came back. I said, Bill, I said, Bonnie's going to really dig this. He goes, you need one of these. And I said, I can't afford it. But, you know, but I'm making $13,000 a year. I can barely afford my rent. He goes, that's your problem. It's your mindset. He said, let me show you the mindset it takes, right? For 13 yeah. years, he coached me and mentored me. And one of the things he told me, I, this is like maybe 1986, maybe 1987, is you start needing to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. That's when he said, you know, you need to check out this guy, Tom, you know, Tony, uh, Tom Hopkins or Jim Rohn. And that's how this whole thing started. Really? And, and I started investing myself in 1987. And um, that's the story how to this day still do it. Wow. That's a, that's unbelievable. You, you hit on so many things there. So often we overlook people because of the way that they're dressed. And, and we think that, Oh, if you're, if you're successful, man, you look a certain way, you've got all the nice stuff. They're not always the case, is it? Drove a pickup truck, <laughs> North Carolina flannel shirt, pickup truck, right? Just yeah. put, put it all together. Right. Yeah. So never, never judge anybody, man. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Jim Rohn, it, you mentioned going to one of his seminars. Yeah. I love his diseases of attitude. If you've never watched that, you can go back on YouTube and watch him do that diseases of attitude. And that is just one of the best seminars that I have seen. Everybody was kind of sitting at the round tables and he was up and speaking and, and using the whiteboard. Yep. Is that, is that how he did all of his seminars? Dave? He, he would sit up front in a chair, right? Had, had a, basically a flip chart in the yeah. had a flip chart, right? Yes. You go up there and start writing stuff down. And I mean, there's no PowerPoints. There's no <laughs> flashing lights, right? Yeah. And, I mean, I was fascinated because he said he just put it on the board and just start talking. And yeah. one thing that Tony taught me, and yeah. Jim Rohn was a master at this, is he always spoke from the heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that that's what really helped me as I transition to what I'm doing today is always speak from your heart. And this, that's what the true masters do. And he was a master. 
Yeah, I, remember, I sent my, um, well, I didn't, but we, my ex-husband and I really started listening to Tony Robbins and everything. He went to one of the seminars, said it was just like unreal, you know, walking on the coals and all this yeah. mindset and, and stuff. Is he, does Tony Robbins stay like that? Consist like all the, every time, you know what I mean? Is that really him or is it just like a. No, that's him. Yeah. That's him. He's, he, he's, he's very intense, right? Yes. He's very focused, right? He's very focused. But he, he comes from the heart of everything he does. He's a lot of people don't know. He's he's got one of the biggest hearts of anybody, but you don't see that a lot of times, right? You think he's just bigger than life. But no, he's he's a very giving person and but he's yeah. intense. He is oh, intense. Yeah. Yeah. I watched him last week. There was a that live thing that Matthew yep. McConaughey did. And uh he was the last little bit, but guy, it was really good. I was telling Daniel about some of the things he said, and I was like, Wow, it's really good. He's got a different mission now. He's really about about giving back now. It's all about giving back. Last last ten year, he does he, see, he does ten year plans, and that's one of the things I learned from him is to do a ten year plan. And now he's really transitioned from the financial world, which for the last ten years he's talking about finance, finance, finance. Yes. Now it's really about giving, right, and growing and giving and giving back. So, yeah, you know, I think it, yeah, you can learn something from everybody. It's something that I learned. All, yep, and, and everybody's got something to share. It, that's right. There's so many lines that are coming up that both of those gentlemen use. I, I know that Tony talks about, like you say, we we overestimate what we can do in a, a year and underestimate what we can do in 10 years. Right. Isn't that one of the things that he says? But I'm sure there's so many lessons. And and being around these great folks, you you really kind of dove in. When, when you got that encouragement to, to kind of go for it, you, you've been going at it for how long now, Dave? Well, it's been since 87. And one of the things that I learned – and I learned this from Tony, and I heard this before. I learned it from Tony. Proximity is power, right? Proximity yes. is power. So I always try to put myself in a position to be in proximity of these mm -hmm. great people because you never know what may happen. And that's what happened with me and Tony. I was just in proximity. I was serving. I was at one of his events. I was one of the volunteers. I paid my own way, 100% of the expenses, at one of his events over in uh, Hawaii. And just happened to uh, help his wife, his, his former wife, with the situation. And that's when that's when it all started coming together. And um, and I was just in proximity. I was in within the same room. Yes, you have to be in awesome. proximity to these people, right? You have to. Absolutely, and and I I'm I'm so glad that you rang that bell. I, I think that is such a big deal to create proximity in in how whatever that takes to be around great people. Because as I've said before, whatever lunch table you're sitting at, if you're sitting with whatever group in school, you become you start acting like them, talking like them. And, and and being like the people that you're around. Well, that's what Bill did for me. I mean, one of the things Bill would do for me once a quarter or once every few months, he there's this place in Charlotte that's no longer here called Bill Spoon's Barbecue. And we'd go down and eat barbecue, right? And put a bib on and have barbecue. It was great barbecue. But there, the first time he did this, he invited me to come, but he was meeting with his kitchen cabinet. And these are the people like the CEO of then NCNB and First Union and Duke Energy. And he's running with people like that. <laughs> Here I am sitting at the table. I didn't know what to say, right? I just like, just shut up, right? Like my mom said, just shut up and listen, right? Yeah. And, but it taught me how to be around these people too. Right. These guys, these guys and gals put their pants on just like I do, but they have but they have insight. And so, you know, I, when I had that opportunity to be around with Tony and these other people, I could at least understand, you know, the mindset, right? Yes. I, I, that. And that, that helped me immensely. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we create proximity and sorry, Jenny, we create proximity and then we, we learn they're a human too. And, I mean, they have these great abilities, these great strengths and these, this great knowledge, but they're just like us. And we forget that if we're not around them, that that's, that's, that's a powerful point. Sorry, Jenny, go ahead. No, I was just wondering like being on that table and I know everybody says that I'm kind of frozen, but yeah, you can still hear me. Okay. Um, <laughs> Did you ever feel like you asked a stupid question? I didn't ask any questions. <laughs> I, I, I had all my questions for Bill, right? Okay. It's like, yeah. you know, because I mean, it was, this was his kitchen cabinet, right? It wasn't mine. Yeah. So, I mean, I remember these guys would walk in, they had suits on, right? And we're in a barbecue joint, right? Yeah. In a shack down on, on South Boulevard. And all these guys <laughs> put the bibs on, right? Under over their top, put the ties in, put the bibs on, right? Yeah. And eating pork barbecue. That and, is awesome. It's like, you know. I just sit there, man. It's like, I have another sweet tea, right? That's all <laughs> I have. 
<laughs> so I, I want all I wanted, right? Just sit there, you know. So you you took advantage of that proximity. You started working with or in close proximity to Tony, and 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 developed a speaking career and and started doing your your own thing, so to speak. And that kind of is what leads us up to this this very impactful, very memorable time in your life. This. I have to keep looking at the date, but it was January 15th, 2009. So I'd I'd love for you to kind of take us back in this time machine and tell us about that day and and, and what happened. I I know you've told this story a lot, but I I just think it's so powerful. There's always something new that comes out. Um, It's amazing. So, you know, it was, you know, I was there for a business meeting, third day of a business meeting. I was still working uh, with a company by the name of Oracle and I was head of security for Tony, right? So I was doing all these things. Mm-hmm. And I was there in a three-day business trip, and we worked in a distribution center that day in Brooklyn. Got, and they opened up early, so we started at 5 o'clock in the morning, right, instead of the usual 8 or 9. So we got done at 10. So I'm like, I get to go home early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Called the travel agent, worked with her, and she put me on flight 1549, right? Yeah. I, was, I had a first-class seat at 5 o'clock, man. I gave it up for C-15A just to get home early. Oh, and, wow. I was right? going to ask you that. That's that's an interesting little tidbit. Okay. Yeah. I, I flew all the time. I, mean, the, I flew 100,000 miles a year with U.S. Airways. So, you know, I, yeah. had, all, I had all the perks, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, I gave it up just to get a window seat, right? Just to get home. I and, you know, it. nothing unusual until the plane, you know, all of a sudden you hear the explosion on the plane, right? Oh, Lordy. Okay. And, yeah. And, you know, I mean, there's a whole bunch of leading up, but you hear the explosion. All right. I'm a C-15A, see the fire coming out beneath the left wing. All right, plane lost the engine. But if you fly a lot, you know, planes have multiple engines. So it's like no big deal. No big <laughs> Sorry, deal. That's still right, a big going back to the airport, was banking, yeah. right? Going back to the airport, banking. But that's what I tell people. That's where God's grace really entered, because I believe, because it happened on the both engines simultaneously, the double burst strike simultaneously, took everything out. So no one at that point knew that it happened on the other side likewise. Which wow. I think was God's grace because if they did, I think they people would have freaked out. Yeah. So, so yeah. J- just to kind of set the stage for folks that may not have heard this, you're on you're on an airplane and you're going home. You've yep. just taken off and Boom. You, 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 something happens. You fly all the time. Tell us about the vibe when at that initial stage. I know all of this happened rather quickly after takeoff. Yep. What was what was the vibe in the airplane? Was people just didn't know what was going on? Was there was there fear? No, and that's why it was so quiet to hear a pin drop. Oh, and I, I, you know, I attribute that. I, I talked to another captain later on, and we talked about that moment. He yeah. asked me the same kind of question. And one of the things that came out was, I think, one of the reasons that played out the way it did that day because of the passenger makeup of the plane. And people say, "Well, what does that mean mean to do anything?" Well, if you look at, say, if you're coming from Orlando to Charlotte, what kind of people are going on a plane going from Orlando? Families, mm-hmm. kids, parks, right? Having fun. Right. And a few business people. New York's 180 degree difference, right? Right. Business right. people, right? Yeah. The business people who are like, okay, all right, let's, you know, we'll figure this thing out, right? We'll figure this thing out. That's right. We'll figure this thing out. So that's, I think that's why the initial vibe was no one panicked. Wow. No one panicked. You know? I'd have been crying. So, so you, you've taken off, and I think the the uh, you were in an Airbus 320. I looked that up just to kind of see, you know. So there's 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 three seats on either side, an aisle in the middle. You're in you're in a, a we'll just call it a, a regular a regular seat with the rest of the passengers here. Steerage. Right. That we take off so, shortly after takeoff. This this is all happening. Right. So it's so everybody's happening. remaining some somewhat calm. Tell us, tell us what else happens after that. Well, I just felt in banking, right? Yeah, we're okay. going back to the airport, another plane. I'm not getting home early now, right? All right, mm-hmm. no big deal. And then you start banking. All of a sudden, you look out the window, and all of a sudden, you see Manhattan's right there up close. You're like, "Wow, Manhattan's right here. I've never seen it." <laughs> right? And then you sort of look out the window a little bit. And it's like there's a bridge coming up. I've never seen that one, right? So it's all like, okay, I hadn't seen this all before. And then. <laughs> Then you get to the bridge and all of a sudden it's so quiet and you hear the captain's only words, this is your captain brace for impact. Oh, oh, there you go. Now, oh. you're, now you're serious. Now yeah. games, I would say game on now because it is serious and you got less than 60 seconds and something's going to happen and it's not looking good. 
Wow. Okay. So now, now we have to do a vibe check, right? Yeah. Does yeah. the vibe change when the captain says brace for impact? Take us inside your mind. Take us in what you think the other folks' minds were, just to kind of set that stage. My mind was, I better get my stuff together, right? Yeah. I better. So I, I did. I prayed. The first thing I did is I prayed. Yeah. Right? And I, yeah. me and my creator need to be on the same wavelengths right now, right? Right. It's not looking good, right? Got my wallet because I always put my wallet in my briefcase because it's always bulky in the back, right? So I put it in a brief. I pulled the wallet out, put it in my pants. Because if something happened, at least, yep. at least they can claim my body, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and then, you know, wow. all of a sudden, you know, it's, it, you put your head down, right? Yeah. And then I start putting the, you know, I start putting the game plan together because if I do survive, I got to do something. And, you know, I saw the movie of my life pass before my eyes as I was doing this. It's like I saw with clarity and playing little league baseball and high school football and mer- meeting my wife and all these defining moments, Wow. And then my game plan, I kept saying in my head, I'll up out, I'll up out, I'll up out. What, what I have a game plan. My, I'm, a, I'm an athlete. Oh. You have a game plan. Yeah. And other people, I heard other people texting and f- making phone calls. Mm. Oh, wow. People were, people were, at that point, they were like, okay, this is it. I better, I better get something. I better get it out. You know, mm. I didn't think about that. I just thought about, you know, getting the game plan together. So, yeah. But no one yeah. was freaking out. Everybody's making plans, though, because 60 seconds from now, you may not be around anymore. Wow. So, man, I'm just trying to, that—that that is for me, one of the worst possible fears of just j- hearing the captain say, cause there's always, there's been, I've been on a plane before things happen as you have. And, and you're like, well, it's, it's kind of scary, but the captain seems to be cool. If the captain's cool, I'm cool. When he yeah. says great for impact. <laughs> the, the, it's cool anymore. <laughs> no, yeah. He hadn't well, said that one before either. So, you know, that was a new one for him. So, you Did know, you know you were going down in the water at that point? As soon as he crossed the bridge, yeah, because there's nothing left. Yeah. I mean, he, he wasn't going to Teterboro, right? He couldn't get the plane there. Yeah. He, and and yeah. there's the water, right? It's like the only thing I remember from water landings that I've ever seen is planes toppling. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, because they don't hit it right. You don't hit it just right. There's a way to hit it. You hit it right. But if you don't hit it right, you're either going to Manhattan or Newark or down at the bottom of the river, right? One of the three. Yeah. Where are you going? Right. So, so here we go. We're bracing for impact. And, and somebody said, how do you brace for impact? It's it's the hands on front of the seat and the head down, right? I mean, that's. Well, yeah, you don't practice, but whatever you can hold on to, hold on to. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and cover that head. You know what I mean? To me, I always think I'm terrified of flying. I've said it a hundred thousand times. I'm terrified. <laughs> but I, I'll still do it. But I always, I mean, I'm always looking around trying to see. I'm like, if I could protect this head, yep. maybe things could be okay. Maybe you have a shot. Yeah. Maybe you get a shot. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So so here we go. We're bracing for impact. Now what happens? Well, you know, 60 seconds after you cross the bridge is when we hit the river, right? Yeah. And he hit it hard. I mean, it was a hard. I went back in my seat and up. I mean, it rocked me, right? Yeah. But he, he estimates he hit between 100, 120 miles an hour. Wow. So that's a, that's a pretty it's a pretty hard hit. He but hit, hit it 120. Okay, yeah. Hit it perfectly though, right? Backside yeah. first, right? But when he did that, all of a sudden, you know, have you have you never been to the museum in Charlotte where the plane is? The back of the plane ripped off. So oh, now well. water's coming in, right? I mean, oh wow. Okay. And it's 36 degree water, right? So it's cold water, but you're not feeling it because now it's like, okay, I'm alive. What do I do now? Yeah. Isle up out, right? Isle up out. Isle up out. So, you know, have a game plan, right? Yes. I'll so, up out. Yep. Yep. So at that point, you know what? People were very orderly. I mean, they, I mean, I'll say it like this. It was, the term I used that night with Katie Couric was control chaos. Real. Right? Yes. No one's losing it, but man, it's time to Organized roll now, right? chaos. Yep. We're not, we're not messing around now. We got to go. And yeah. it was my time to go. I was like, okay, I'll up out. And that's when everything changed for me. Mm-hmm. That's what changed. Because when I was when I was ready to get out, and all of a sudden I heard my mom talk in my head, and my mom passed away in 1997. But there was something she would tell me when I was a child. All of a sudden I heard in the back of my head it was, "If you do the right thing, God will take care of you." Mm-hmm. And I grew up in a small town outside of Cincinnati, Ohio, where everybody knew everybody, and everybody had everybody's back. Yeah, the good old days, right? When the neighbors down the street who you were, right? Yeah. They took care of you. You could go out till 11 o'clock at night, and your parents aren't yelling at you, right? Yeah. You know so. So that's when I made the decision to climb over the seats to go towards the back of the plane. 
see if anybody needed help. Mm. Wow. Because you know, I didn't know if they needed help. I knew I was alive, right? Yeah. I knew I was okay. Let's see if anybody else needs help. Climbed over and it got to the back, and the water was about chest level deep at that point. Oh wow! Because the plane is actually submerged at that point. Yeah. But people were moving. All right. No one's waiting around, right? Everybody's moving. So I get behind the last person, and I'm starting to make my way out. Now it's chest level deep water. The plane hits on the back. Bins are broken open. Luggage is coming out, floating in the water, and it's dark because it's late afternoon New York winter. Wow. Right. So you're yeah. just sort of you can see, but you can't really see, right? Right. It's not like in a movie where there's a lot of sunshine coming in and lights. No. 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 <laughs> no. So yeah. the uh, first light that I saw was on the right side of the plane at 10 F. Like, I, I'm out of here, right? Time to go. And then I got there, I looked out, and there was no room on the wing of the boat for me. It was already filled up. And that's why I was inside the plane for about seven minutes, waist deep in 36 degree water, holding on to the lifeboat. Oh, my word. Whoa. So I, I I can't help. Anytime we hear a story, what do we do? We put ourselves there. Yeah. If I'm Dave, I've just, I've survived. Now I'm in freezing cold water. It's going to be a hard thing for me to do, climb over that seat and start looking for people to help. If I'm being honest about it, right? I mean, I want to get out of this plane. <laughs> and I don't judge anybody. Hey, everybody did what they were told to do and everybody had to do what they had to do, right? Yeah. Right. Everybody did what they had to do. Yeah. So you 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 get to the to the, the so they've run out of room. So you're on the plane. It's starting to sink. Are you panicked at this point, Dave? Are you nervous? I was focused, focused, yeah. extremely focused. Right? Yeah. I was, watch, I was watching everything because you know I mean this thing is moving very quickly, right? And yeah. all of a sudden, look up, and all of a sudden, it's looking sound like people walking on water. I tell people it's like a mirror. That's like a miracle, right? From the Bible. Yeah. You look out, and all of a sudden, you see people walking down a wing, but it's actually yes. like looking, walking on water. Mm. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, was, it was amazing. But what happened was, was, about four or five minutes later, all of a sudden, I felt the plane shift. And I didn't know what happened until later. But what I found out was, was one of the boats in the rescue it was a tugboat. It was a big boat. Tugboats are big, heavy boats. They got tug, yeah. tug, you know, boats in, right? As he backed out, he hit the front of the plane, and it shook the plane. When it shook the plane, I felt water go on my back. And all of a sudden, I thought Titanic. I was like, this thing's Yeah, going that's down, what I was man. just thinking. Oh, my gosh. I, I was just thinking I, that. This, I don't want to be sucked down in a plane, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've already survived one thing, right? Let's, let's at least now give us a shot, right? <laughs> so I thought I always stop and thank my mom and dad because they had made me get swimming lessons when I was a kid. I may not be here today because I had to yeah. jump in and swim. And that was wow. the longest 15-yard swim of my life. That's the end of the – about the length of the wing is how what I had to swim to get to the boat. It's yeah. 36 degree water, fully clothed, and jet fuel. And that's why I wear glasses today because I got jet fuel in my eyes. They oh, found wow. out uh, from the swing. Yeah, they had little specks of, you know, jet fuel in my eyes. I got back to Charlotte and I was having trouble seeing. So, um, but yeah, but now I get there right. I'm now at, at a boat and I got there and now they're yelling me to climb. You know, and I can't, 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 right? And, you know, I, I tell people, and once again, I'll go about this from a biblical perspective. It's sort of like Peter when Jesus said, come on, walk on the water, right? And, G, and Peter's like looking down, he all of a sudden yeah. falls through the water because he didn't believe, right? Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden I said, can't. And my mom's word, the word that she hated most in life was can't. She won't let us say it in the house. We never said that when we were kids. She yeah. Slap us, tell us, you know. We never, we never say that word in this house. We got one arm up and the other arm up and somebody grabbed me and got me on the boat. And that's, that's why I tell people, you know, you, you have, you have to have faith. You have to believe, right? Yeah. yeah but you got to put yourself in position too, right? You, you can't just expect somebody to come rescue you. Right. right? You got to put yourself in the position. And that's what I think uh, happened to me that day. I was fortunate to have enough you know, mindset, which I was fortunate enough to learn early in my life. Yeah. So at least keep going. Right. As long as I'm going, I'm alive, right? Yeah, and 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 so it's it's very possible, but that all those lessons that you learn from those great mentors, those people that you had proximity to, it allowed you to to do the right thing, including your mother, right? I mean, That's right. It, 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 the mentorship started with mom. Well, I tell I tell these people, especially kids and younger people, you know, your mom and dad sound like idiots, right? When they're young, <laughs> right? And yeah. all of a sudden, twenty years later. <laughs> the old man, the old ladies knew what they were talking about, right? Hey, I, I, always people, say, right? 
Yeah. Anytime I say with my dad, I'm like, man, that that couldn't be right, you know. And anytime I do that, every time it proves that he actually was. Yeah, maybe <laughs> what you're talking about, right? Yeah. So, so that, how did that like change? I mean, so that moment, did it send you on a different path, outlook on what you wanted to do? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really, you know, really happened that following weekend, uh, Jenny. I mean. You know, when I got back to Charlotte, it was, that was a whole other story we don't have time to talk about. But when I went to church that weekend, everybody wanted to talk to me. Mm -hmm. But there was one guy who really wanted to talk to me. He was the head of men's breakfast and asked me to speak the next week at men's breakfast. Now, I've been in that church, you know, at that time, it was, what, six, maybe 15 years. I know what men's breakfast is. A bunch of old guys, right, eating pancakes, right? <laughs> you know, no big deal. We're, you know, we're in the South, we know, right? Yeah. You show up men's breakfast, you have pancakes, and you sing a little bit, right? No big deal. And, but they invited, they put it out in public in the Charlotte Observer and five, 600 people showed up. Oh, wow. Right now, I don't even know what I'm going to say now. I'm freaking out. <laughs> and, and it's like, I mean, but more importantly, they, you know, they ran out of pancakes, right? And that's oh. not good for Methodists. I'm not going to go for Baptists, <laughs> all right? But for Methodists, you better have some food, right? So now <laughs> I go behind the stage because our gym, our, 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 our church set up with a gym and a stage and curtains. And that's how our, our gym, our church set up. Go behind the curtain and say, God, give me something to say, man. Right? Give it to me now. Deliver. <laughs> and, you know, because I don't, I'm not, I have no, because I didn't practice. I was yeah. whirlwind, right? I was all over the place, right? And he gave me something to say. Don't know what I said. But <laughs> two men wanted to talk to me. One was from, but that, then it was, uh, you know, then it was uh, Nations Bank mm -hmm. and Wachovia. Now it's Bank of America and yep. Wells Fargo. But they had people on the plane with me. But what happened was, this is when it changed for me, Jenny. Is I was just talking to these guys, right? Just talking a little bit. I look up and there's old ladies in the back of the room, elderly lady. I should be very politically correct, elderly lady. <laughs> yeah. Um, but she looked at me and caught my eye and came up and, and came and interrupted this, just walked in the conversation and grabbed my arm. And I like jumped and like, what's this old lady gonna do to me, right? I mean, you don't know. How do you don't know, right? It's like, but she looked me in the eye and said something that changed everything. She said, I was questioning if there's a God, and I don't believe in miracles, but your physical evidence that there is a God and he does miracles. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. She let yeah. my arm go, looked me in the eye and walked away. And all of a sudden I've seen two men, grown men crying, bawling right in front of me. Wow. And my minister was behind me witnessing this whole thing. And I'm like, I'm like, what, what, what's going on? Right. I'm trying to figure this thing out. And that's when I realized what happened to me. It impacted somebody. Yeah. And now believes in a greater being because of me. And wow. Jenny, that was the moment that set me on a whole different pathway in my life. That's that's amazing. I've, I've got to put Jonathan Peoples. He keeps us entertained. I wish I was as funny. He says he loves eating pancakes with the old guys. <laughs> <laughs> the old guys can, the old guys can do it, man. It, it, it makes it up. Is it uh, thou shalt not run out of pancakes the 11th? <laughs> yep. So, you better not, right? Yeah. Not right for Baptists, right? But not for Methodists, right? Wow. Yeah, that's right. You make a great point there, too. We talked about earlier speaking from the heart. And, and I think that that's kind of the, I call that the parachute. When we don't know what to say, we don't know what to do. We just speak from the heart. And, right. and, and that is, that's, that's the thing that's going to, going to save us, right? We don't know what to say. We feel intimidated. We feel scared, whatever that is. We just speak from the heart because we're all, we're all human. So I think that, that experience, I think it's just, it allowed you to speak from the heart from now on because you experience something that yeah. impacts other people's lives that gives them hope. And, and inspiration, and, and you live through it, right? Yeah, and you know, you go back to Jim Rohn and Tony, one of the things, you never saw, saw them. If you ever saw them, and I was with Jim, Tony a lot, he never has notes. He always spoke from the heart. Really? And he yeah. told me that. He said, you do, you know, when you do this, because he was pushing me out of the nest, go, 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 do it. Speak from your heart, right? Don't ever take notes on stage. So, hey, I, I'm so you glad me, I just go and I say a prayer and just speak from the heart from that point on. So. I, I love that. So the, I do a little bit of, of public speaking myself and my last speech, I was so nervous to get up, but I knew that I needed to go up without any notes because if I have the notes, I can't speak from the heart. I'm, right. I'm going, I'm going to be attached right. to that. And you can't connect with your audience. If you've got notes in your hand, you're, it's more about me than it is about them almost. And you know, you so look people in the eye, you got to put, put, you got to look people in the eye, right? Right. And get in their heart, get in their soul. Right. Yeah. You get, then you get that kinesthetic connection. Yes. Yes. 
There's something that happens. And Jenny, she's showing us a question mark. That can mean only one thing. Jenny Wayne's got a question. <laughs> well, it just means that I don't want to interrupt Daniel, but he's on a roll. Yeah, he's um, on a roll. But, you know, you said that first time that you spoke at church, yeah, okay, right. and you were like, oh, I don't even know what I'm yeah. going to say and this and this. Okay. Did you, are you nervous? When did you get over that? When did you get over just speaking from, I mean, and just start yeah. speaking from the heart? Well, you know, I, 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 I sort of took the Zig Ziglar approach. <laughs> Zig, Zig, Zig Ziglar's approach was the first 50 to 60, 70 times you speak, do it for free. Just practice your technique, right? And, and just internalize it. Yeah. So that's what I did. I just went up and started talking. And I, I have some thoughts in my mind, right? About where direction I was going to go. Yeah. And I would just talk. And then that's, that's what happened. And all of a sudden, my breakthrough happened. My real breakthrough came uh, well, about, about maybe a year, maybe a year and six months later, four or five months later is when. I got invited to speak for the Red Cross up in D.C. with the, at the Supreme Court. Wow! And that was a very impactful, in fact, because I, I had, I mean, I had to deliver. Yeah, I had to deliver. So yeah. I knew I, I, I really practiced my technique, and I knew what I was going to say. But you know, I, I connected with each person that I looked at everybody in that room. At yeah. Once, and also, I, I, also, it came to me right, and then somebody who saw saw me do that set me on a whole different pathway. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. And I think that what you're saying, like looking at when <laughs> anytime I've ever been to a somebody doing public speaking or motivation or whatever, and when they make eye contact, you literally feel like they're talking to you. That's right. I mean, you do. It's like, I don't know. They just must like me a whole lot, you know? And I'm like, oh, yeah, they're talking to me. But you made that connect. That is. Mm. I did that last week in Ohio. I had 250 people, and I made sure I at least looked at everybody at least once. And all of a sudden, you know, you, you have that connection, right? Now they're, now they're on the plane with you. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're on the that's plane right. with you. They're right? on the plane with you. Yeah, because that's a powerful emotional time, obviously for you and and vicariously. We live that story. We oh. go on that plane. Who are we going to call if we're going right. down? If he says brace for impact, what do we do? Who are we thinking about? What's important, right? Yep. You talk about moments mattering, and and I think that that's such a a true statement, right? I mean, and, and we find out what really does matter, right? And when he says brace for impact. Right. Yep. And that's what, yeah, that's why we've named our book Moments Matter because you all of a sudden realize all these moments in our life are there for a reason or purpose. They prepare you for that. But mm -hmm. when that one defining moment comes, all this crap that we worry about, I, I mean, I'm still, I still have it like everybody yeah. does. They don't, they don't matter. It's, yeah. it's those moments, right, that make it up. And also you realize it's your family, it's your relationship with your yes. creator, or whatever you call that creator, right? Yeah. Whatever it is, right? It's those things that are really important. So, yeah, you know, some of the stuff that we all you know, worry about, I, I we all worry about stuff. Yep. Yeah, you know, like my assistant tells me, yep, you know, no one dies, no one's bleeding, we'll get through it. That's right? it. There you go. I love that. I want to I want to bring Joe's comment on here, yeah. Jenny. Uh he says, funny how one incident in our life can pave the way to our future roadways. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. William Shakespeare quote there. Mm -hmm. Very true. What were you gonna say there, Jenny? Well, I was just going to say that it's like also just I think about your mom, how she really instilled and ingrained that in you and how we try to do that with my children. I do. I, she, I say to them, you know, if you do the right thing for the right reasons, it works out. That's what right. I always say. It'll work out. If, it's, if you're doing it for the right reasons, it will work out. And how you remembered that. And, and so it's like that it just shows you how important it is as your kids to instill that in them. Well, Mike, my, and I'm glad you brought that up, Jay, because I'm going to go back to that day or the next day because my two of my kids got to actually witness this. Because when I got back to Charlotte, did, you know, I was all these interviews and all that mm -hmm. stuff, right? Yeah. My daughter, my eldest daughter, who's the one who got the voicemail that I left from the from the ferry that I was alive, uh, handed me my key fob because I lost my key. I've lost everything, right? Yeah. She handed me my key fob. We got to the car and I sat down and she was in the front seat of my daughter, who was my third daughter, who was in, I think was in fifth grade at that point in the back seat, and I, I said, you know, I said, you know what? My mom was right. If you do the right thing, God does take care of you. Oh, and I think yeah. they got to see that, right? Because, you know, all I mean, the last 24 hours that day, it was like going crazy, right? Yeah. But she was right. Yeah. You know, I, I, I could have done something different within the right thing, but it did pay off. And yeah. so, you know, I tell kids, hey, your mom and dad, you know, you know, these things they tell you, you know, you said, okay, I'm like, you know, I don't know if I buy that or not. I don't see that on TV or TikTok, right? Oh, no. Exactly. Like, you know what? 
I, one thing that we have that they don't have is wisdom. Yeah. Because you have to have time for wisdom. Yep. Oh, Can't get wisdom tomorrow, right? Well, it's an excellent point. I think, you know, we do the right thing. It's not immediate return. You know, you were doing the right thing, but man, you had to swim through water with all that, that suit on probably and shoes and get pulled up. You got well, gas listen, in your eyes. <laughs> every day in Jesus' life wasn't picture dust of sunshine. That's right. right. And that's what yeah. I tell people. It's like, you know, I, I believe there's a Jesus and a God. That's me. You can believe whatever you want. But Jesus has some bad days, right? Yeah. Right? I mean, he has, <laughs> what happened to him, right? He did the right thing, right? He never yeah. gave up. And Absolutely. It's glory now, right? So Yeah. So that just being in alignment, doing the right thing, whatever that means for us, it, that's right. a big deal. It, it's not immediate return, but eventually, hey, you, you almost, you can't lose if you're doing the right thing, right? That's right. <laughs> so... Uh, I want to talk about a few other things that uh, that you did. I know you only have about five minutes left. One of the things, so I, I know you did the Navy SEAL swim. Oh, yeah. You went back and, and kind of overcame the the That's thing that, that got you. Tell, tell us briefly about the, the swim and that experience. Yeah, I was, hey, listen, I, I had no game plan to go back to the Hudson River and swim. That was not <laughs> my game plan. Of course, my, one of my friends was going to do it with the Navy SEALs and said, would you do it with me? And maybe you get some redemption, right? Maybe you'll, so I did it. Right. And I had swam since 1979. And so I had to relearn how to swim in a hundred yeah. days, go from basically 25 yards in Charlotte, North Carolina, to 3.1 miles. Woo, in one of the toughest, toughest, toughest currents in the country, right? In the river. Yeah. But you know what? I wanted to show my kids and people that, you know, at 60 years old, you can do anything. It's about your mindset. Right. Mm -hmm. Plus I want to show people how you face your fear. And then, you know, all of a sudden, what you realize out of this experience is all about gratitude. Yes. You know, you don't get here by yourself in life. Yeah. And giving thanks to something bigger than yourself is what really came out of that. And so, you know, I, uh, I, I did that and I was, I'm blessed to be able to survive it. It was rough. I'm, tell, I'm not telling you it was easy. It was, it was one of the roughest things I've ever done in my life. Oh, yeah, but, man. But, but, you know, it came out with so many great lessons and great relationships for me. Yeah, great lessons and relationships. And sometimes these, you know, Jim Rohn said, uh, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. And I think having this, these athletic pursuits, these doing hard things with great people, you've got proximity, it lifts right. you up so you can be great when you do business, right? Yeah. And, you know, if I can handle this, right? Yeah. What, what, can I, what else can I, yes. I handle, right? Absolutely. 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 So one other thing here before, before I know, again, you have to go here, but you talk about distinct advantages yeah. and, and I think that's so important because we see all this talent in the world. Everybody's talented and yeah. we're like, well, my goodness, what do I have? Yes. T talk about finding your distinct advantage and why that's important. This, I think this is one of the big insights that I had after the plane crash. Cause you know, like I, I was like, am I really worthy to do this? Right. I mean, you know, come on, you know, and also I started realizing after I had a couple of talk, I had a conversation with Tony talking to some people, but what, what the distinct advantage is, is what you're most passionate about and most gifted at. And everybody's got a passion and everybody's gifted at something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All you got to do is find that. Those two. Once you find those two things and they, they come together, I tell people that's, and I use a baseball term, pitch. That's the point in time that changes everything. Mm -hmm. Pitch. Because if, you're, if you find your passion and what you're most you know, gifted at and they merge, you're unstoppable. And it may be just, you know, just being a mom. Right. I'm really I'm, I'm passionate about it. I'm really good at it. You know, that's my advantage. I could be the best mom in the world. So it, it, I just happened to find out everything melted for me like that. Right. I was, yeah. I, I was passionate about helping people and I had a gift of speaking. Yes. And yeah, that's right. And then, and then you look at these external factors. Of course, you didn't plan to be in this in this horrible, but all things kind of came together. So you, yep. you use your strengths, you use your gifts and you use what happens to, right. to to create a great life for you and the people you care about to give back. Jenny, you got one, one thing I wanted to say, because I know he's leaving. But yeah. um, the, the thing you posted the other day about if you don't aim at anything, that I don't know why I keep going back to it and looking at it and look, because I feel like. I don't know. Tony Robbins said something about it too last week, but in a different way. But I just thought you're, it's so right because it's like, there's, you have a goal. If you're not aiming towards it, you're never even going to get there. And I, I'm, yeah. I'm applying this to myself because yeah. I have these goals and everything. But when I read that, I was like, it's like he's in my head or something, but it's so <laughs> true. it was a great little article that you did there. Well, I do that every week on LinkedIn and I Facebook because I, I want, I want people to understand there's a lot more 
then in the background. There's all these yes. lessons, and my mission now is to teach everything that uh, to the next generation. Like paint it um, forward, yeah. Leave it behind. Leave the legacy because that's what my mentor did with me. That's my mission right now. So thank you for helping me do that. So thank you so much for letting me do that. Yeah. Well, thank you for spending some time with us. I yes. know you're a busy man. And uh, we just do this podcast to, to encourage ourselves and, and hopefully encourage other people. You've been a great guest. And, hey, have a great rest of the day, Dave. Absolutely. Likewise. And I love to hook up with you when I get down to Spartanburg, all right? Yes, please do. Hey, hey Dave, right. I'm in Shelby right outside of Charlotte. I know where Shelby is on the way to Spartanburg. I know exactly yeah. where it is. But my we'll business is in Spartanburg. So, yeah, when you come on down to Spartanburg. We'll make a pit stop. All right. Sounds good. Y'all have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Well, there we go. Now, Jenny, I, I want to say a couple of things. I want to say, number one, great job at not freaking out when you were told that your video was not doing well. <laughs> I was I was in my mind. I was thinking, please don't tell her that her video is not doing good because she might freak out. And you didn't tell us. How did you? How did I didn't you freak out, but I'm going to tell you what I did. OK, tell us what you did. We want to go inside Jenny Winnie's head here. I well, I know that you said that my face shows that um the word mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you know what I did? I just sent out a text to, to Mr. Jonathan. Yeah. Mr. Jonathan. Yeah. Am I still frozen? Yeah. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Wow, you're you're like one of those uh, pickpocket people. You know, you're like, you're I like, like you're I, I, listen, I had to do it a couple of times because I was look trying to look at you type it. And okay. then I said, Man, this is giving me anxiety. And you know what Jonathan said? What? He said, don't listen to Otis. Oh, don't listen to Otis. Isn't that a smart remark to make? Mm -hmm. I love that. Otis being you know. the OCD, the, the externalization of this, this thing, this area here, <laughs> this, this little monster that wants to take away the joy of the moment. But I did. I did see that, and I was. I was thinking, man. I hope Jenny doesn't. Uh, you know what? I was wondering, like, because he was ble He was freezing on me some, so he was a, a little bit with the. Uh, so I don't know how that. But you, you know. were fine. You were just fine. So don't worry about anybody else. <laughs> oh no, no. I, hey, I wanted every. I want. I mean, I started to panic. I almost. I almost went out to come back in, and then I said, "No, I'm not going to do it." They said they can hear my voice, so it might just be my voice going. <laughs> that's right that's right and your your face didn't stick on any of those funny looks you know how sometimes <laughs> <laughs> man i still had more to ask him and well, I was, what were you gonna ask let's talk no, a little I, don't know. About I mean that. i just feel like he has a lot to share you know? yeah he does yeah absolutely and and i love some of the things that he was talking about i love the fact that he said that he likes to go up without notes because of course that that spoke to me and uh i like to you know I love Jim Rohn and some of these quotes that Jonathan Peoples put up. Uh -huh. You know, th this is one of my favorites. Don't wish it was easy. Hey, he didn't want you to do that one. He wanted you to do the one that actually he spelled right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he's a great speller. I did not mean to to give the impression that you do that. <laughs> that he's not a good speller. But that, what a great quote is that because so often it's just like, ah. but that just says, hey, it's on me. I have the responsibility to improve. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, makes me think of things like Toastmasters. You go into Toastmasters, there's all these great speakers, you know, and, and everybody is just as good. Well, hey, now, wait a minute. At the end there, when he said about the pitch, what were the two things? Uh, the pitch. Oh, you know, he said it's like what you um, uh, you're passionate about. Yes. And what you're what good at or. Or your yeah, yeah, that, that, that's kind of how I took took that. I can't I can't speak to it exactly what that was, but I did understand what his point was. It's like all these things intersect. I call it our shoebox of talent, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In this great big cube of of all these talents, there's this little tiny shoebox of things that we are kind of. It's our niche. It's what we're you know. My mine is kind of the energy. I'm always going to have the energy. So it's how how can I use my energy to you know to to to, to benefit others? I guess yeah. it's to contribute. I know. So uh, he's in the metaverse, okay, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. So and moments matter. We have this ebb and flow. So the one thing that we all experience that I wanted to talk about a little bit is this day to day these this this ebb and flow so not just in a week's time but in a in, in our day to day lives we 
You know, something good will happen. Then something bad will happen. Something good will happen. And kind of erasing what's happening and coming back. And that, that to me is, is, is really success, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I mean, this, this morning I had so many things, passion and what you were gifted at equals yes. advantage. And that's why I love having great listeners such uh, and, and, and paying attention. So what did you guys think of, of our guest today? I, I really, I love that story. It makes us all think. I know. And I mean, I remember when, and cause I am scared of flying and we've all, you know, I've said it a hundred thousand times. And then when that happened, I remember thinking, well, okay, any plane I'm on, please let, let Sully be flying it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and, and what's amazing too, now he got all these awards and things and I didn't bring this up, but I did read, I've never seen the, I've never seen the movie by the way, Of course not. but but they talked about maybe the right thing to do was to try to make it back to the airport. Yeah, but no, I know. But he he had to make that talk about responsibility. I mean, as a pilot, you but they say, also, I read too that it was saying how you know it, it, if he had tried to do that, it could have been a lot worse consequences. I mean, he made the right choice. Yeah, I I, I guess I guess we'll never know, but it it, it all turned out well. Now, I, what I didn't know, somebody told me Tom Hanks was flying that plane. Is that true? Huh? In, <laughs> what, in the movie? No, Tom Hanks was the pilot. Of the <laughs> yeah, he played Sully. He does it great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He can play any character great. So. Oh my gosh, it was that was so. I mean, and and I didn't know that. I mean, it was. I liked hearing this from the perspective of him. You know what I mean? He was there. He him, was there. I, would, I would have been so happy to be in the water. I just know that I'm, I'm alive. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I was thinking, you know, so you brace for impact, you hit the water, then, Hey, I'm, I'm not dead. Cause I mean, if I would have died, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't and that know adrenaline where. had to be like, whoosh, I bet when it was finally, he's probably took like a, a week nap. Yeah. But now if you didn't have any family on that plane with you, if it was oh. just you and, and, and you had the opportunity to get off, would you get off or would you go look to help, help people? I mean, you're from your perspective. Mm, I don't know, Daniel, cause I, I'm a helper. Yeah. I, I, I would hate to see people. I don't know that I would have gone over and put myself at the end of the line, but yeah. I certainly would have tried to been helping the people around me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and every everyone is I just man that that sort of that sort of thing it'll make you think. Oh, it'll make you think. It'll make you think. Yeah. And so I think that's that's why that's such a powerful guest. Yeah. So it was, it was amazing. What's your final thoughts? You know, Jerry Springer, he had his final thoughts. Maybe we should do a final thoughts here. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I'm, I was being truthful when I said I kept going back to seeing that about if you don't aim, you know. And, yeah. and that, that has motivated me. Yeah. That has really well, motivated me. Yeah. I did. I, I have not read that article. I'm going to need to, but, but it sounds like ha having some type of target instead of just kind of going through our day to day, it's like, yeah. and, and then it, like, thankfully Joe remembered passion, what you're gifted at. It is a distinct advantage. We got to mm -hmm. use it. It's like, we have things that are very, that we're good at. I have things that I'm legitimately good at. Right. That's that. And if I'm passionate about it, then that is a distinct advantage. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have a talent, you have energy behind it, then good things can happen. And then you use those, all those things for the right reason. Mm -hmm. And that's the formula. And, and again, I hate to keep bringing up Toastmasters, but I do it on Thursday mornings, right? Yeah. Everyone's got a different style. Everyone's got a different strength. It's, it's kind of, uh, I love going over to mom and dad's and they'll, they'll show me the highlights of American Idol. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's kind of the same thing as, you know, there's a lot of talented people, a lot of talented musicians. Some, some can sing a variety of songs. Yeah. Others are niched down. Some can have a big voice. Others are great performers, but they're all singing and they're all good. You know? Yeah. And, and, and they tell them time and time again, just be you, just be you. Well, Hey, Toastmasters, can you ever bring a guest? Absolutely, love for you to come. I, I, I've asked some folks around here. I just think that it's such a great thing. It's it overcoming. What? Well, can you hear the sirens in the background? Daniel, is your plane in the water? <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, we're running out of time here. Yep. Twenty seconds. We're gonna end things. 
Thanks again to Dave Sanderson. Thanks again for Jenny Winnie and her pixel, pixel thing going on there. May the fourth be with you. May the fourth be with you. Thanks, everybody. Joe, Jonathan, and all of the all of the yeah. guests. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody. Let's roll.